Between the race-swapped main character, the CGI dwarves, the utterly insufferable Rachel Zegler in both attitude and how she craps on the source material, as well as the forced feminist message that is changing the source material, and on top of it all, the queers for Palestine are even mad about it because, you know, of course, Gal Gadot being a part of this film... We can all see it a mile away. Even Disney knows it. The upcoming live action Snow White live action adapt adaptation is looking to have a future of failure to be quite possibly Disney's biggest live action flop ever. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into this article from Bounding Into Comics, or uh, actually that Park Place. <laughs> I am so used to reading Bounding Into Car Comics articles. They're great too, but this is that Park Place. Uh, and they said, Rachel Zegler's Snow White avoided it at the Disney parks. Why Disney World and Disneyland are in a hard spot. So they've already kind of been struggling as it is anyway, I think the Disney brand in general has betrayed a lot of its fans, a lot of its viewers, uh, and a lot of trust from parents who used to could just say, oh, okay, let's uh, let's put in a Disney movies, a movie for the kids and not even worry about it. But these days, with all of the demonic ideologies, the uh, crayon movement, if you will, um, and uh, yeah, the, the degeneracy that is constantly being pushed in a lot of Disney properties, they really have betrayed the trust of a lot of normal parents who don't want their kids to sterilize themselves or, you know, actually chemically mutilate themselves or worse, surgically mutilate themselves. Or, I don't know, maybe they don't want their kids to uh, go against... God's design and nature and uh, yeah, all that crazy stuff. They don't want their kids to dabble in this trendy mental illness stuff. So, all right, let's go ahead and continue reading this. Usually when a big Disney movie comes out, you can expect to see the characters from the film appearing in Disney World and Disneyland. There are times when those films are such poorly received. Uh, losers, lose are such poorly received losers that the characters are very quickly shuffled off the list. For those times, you might catch a glimpse of a rarely worn costume appearing at a special event. Most guests likely will say, who is that? But then there are also times when Disney is stuck with a character tie-in where there simply is no good solution. Such is the case with the Little Mermaid live action remake from 2023. The film severe, severely underperformed box office expectations. Instead of breaking a billion, the film may have actually lost money given a gargantuan reported budget and marketing spend. Unfortunately, the film was also tied to racial tensions. Ahead of the film, cast placed a heavy emphasis on the race-swapped Ariel character. After the film performed poorly, blame was sometimes placed upon a society that allegedly did not want to view a non-white mermaid. At this point, we believe that you can determine for yourself what you think might have contributed to the film's demise. That's the thing is, I think if it were a different time um and if we weren't already de dealing with a bunch of identity politics and stuff as it is because if you remember in the past in the 90s there was a black cinderella that was brandy nobody cared didn't you have an asian wasn't the prince asian too so nobody really cared back then <laughs> but you didn't have so much of these dei hires and identity politics running rampant you didn't have people burning down cities in the name of blm you didn't have uh you know a bunch of white hatred and things of that nature that we are seeing a lot now and so i think Given the current times, people are, if they see, in this case, a race-swapped aerial, it doesn't seem like something that organically was being done because, okay, well, maybe this was a mostly black production and they just wanted to do this for fun. You know, it does seem like uh, an absolute deliberate, hey, let's just 
race swap just for the sake of race swapping because I don't know BlackRock funding perhaps or because this is the the thing to do right now because we're pushing diversity equity and inclusion that sort of thing uh so given that the time that it's in because you know if this would have came out in the 90s early 2000s I don't think people would have been that phased by it but I digress. And especially in this case, what we're going through right now, I mean, you see this and then now Snow White uh, being played by, I mean, Rachel Zegler, she Mexican, she's Latina anyway. So Snow White, who, her, Snow White, her skin is supposed to be white as snow. That is not a character that you can uh, really pull off a race swap with. In this case, it just wouldn't make sense. And then given the fact that Little Mermaid already was race swapped, then it's like, okay, this is a concerted effort. It's it's for no other reason than to push this DEI agenda. And this stuff sparks racial conflict, right? Because as a whole, we really don't have a huge racist issue in society in America as a whole. Granted, uh, a lot of this DEI stuff, a lot of what we're seeing uh, with these narratives has pushed more racism than we otherwise would have seen. And clearly there's a bunch of racism against white people as well going on and discrimination, especially with these DEI hiring practices where being white will disqualify somebody from a position, especially a white male. So there is actual racism going on, but perhaps in a different direction than what these Wokies want to uh, create the illusion of right so okay separate from such issues however is the huge problem that was then faced by the disney parks and experiences division of the company meet and greets with new live action little mermaid were scheduled casting was done and publicity was generated though the movie underperformed there was no way the parks could remove the character opportunity in the way they typically would with a box office flop so instead a perhaps even more egregious error was allowed to continue on unabated. While long lines were always expected for the traditional cartoon aerial at Magic Kingdom, the Hollywood Studios theme park meet and greet with the new Ariel was often completely empty of anyone attempting to see her, which is sad for the actors here. Um, even Disney must have recognized the problem and had her appear in a less trafficked area of the park. All of that was lackluster and created terrible optics. Now, Disney is faced with an even more difficult task. What can they do about Snow White? Rachel Zegler's upcoming live action remake of the beloved original Disney animated classic is fraught with controversy. The film's trailer has amassed a historic million dislikes a million dislikes since it was shown to the world at d23 box office projections for the film likely have the twice reshot amal amalgamation of boardroom and focus group catastrophes at a flop for the ages it's now reasonable to surmise this could compete with the marvels and indiana jones at the dial of destiny or and the dial of destiny for the biggest cinematic loser of all times. So what is Disney to do with a theme park tie-in? Should Disney World and Disneyland elect to have the Rachel Zegler version of the character appear? They're almost certainly beholden to have Hispanic and slash or Latina actresses play the role. Not doing so could capture the attention of news articles that could put the company in a bad light. Yet having Hispanic and or Latina actresses standing in rooms with nobody wanting to meet the new Snow White is another horrible look for the company and it certainly wouldn't be the fault of the actress yet if disney decides not to begin casting and training said actresses what if the movie actually succeeds then they're empty of any cross promotion at their most powerful revenue drivers i personally don't see this movie succeeding at all i don't anticipate that whatsoever especially given the the budget that they've really dumped into this and the reshoots and all of that um I think it's just going to be a big L. I think they're going to have to take the L on it. I think they shouldn't even release it, but I digress. Disney could also decide to put forth traditional Snow White appearances with the original cartoon look. The problem there is that Snow White might be accused of being a whitewashed effort 
at the parks. There's almost no conceivable win here. Why be in the middle of all the controversy when you can just not do anything extra for Snow White? If the press calls you out on it, Disney can reply that they have many appearances of Snow White throughout the park and there are merchandise options throughout their retail spaces. Do a no comment and surely, surely, if they do nothing at all to promote the film in the parks, this will be the ultimate signal that the live action mistakes are finally coming to an end. While there may have been a few diamonds in the rough, there is almost no live action attempt which has bested the original animated effort upon which they are based. Of course, if Disney chooses to have a Rachel Zegler doppelganger in the parks with nobody wanting to hang out, you can bet we'll have reporters hanging out ready with stories to write. So this is the situation going on right now. I... Yeah, I think they got themselves in this pickle. Disney is going to have to learn in general with what they're pushing out, and especially when they're doing these live action things to really start actually caring about the source material. And uh, the thing is, though, I don't think these are necessary. I haven't seen a single one of these live action Disney movies at all. I mean, if, if you count like Hook from the 90s, but I'm talking about even then, I think that was a lot different, and I don't even remember that much about it. But in terms of these, I don't know, within the past 10, 20 years, I have not seen a single one of these live-action Disney movies that were adapted based off of the uh, animated movie properties, like the Beauty and the Beast one, the Aladdin one, Lion King, so on and so forth, Little Mermaid. I didn't watch any of those. I just have no interest whatsoever. If I want to watch these movies, I would just rather watch the animated ones. But anyway, there you have it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. And as always, if you want to catch me on my Bible channel, you can watch me at Bible Time with Melanie Mac, where I will read the Bible to you. So thank you all again for watching. I'll catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom.